Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Ford F-250 Power Stroke. We're going to be installing a bypass filter system on the engine. And we've got the kit here, it's a BMK28, and that kit contains the uh, full flow filter, the bypass filter all under one head. And uh, it shows the direction of flow on the arrows here, oil, dirty oil coming from the engine. And then it goes through the filters and back to uh, the engine, the clean oil goes back through the hose back to the engine to feed all the bearings. Um, the brackets come with it for mounting it. Um, the filters also come with it. There's an EABP100 and the efficiency on that is 98.7% efficient absolute at 2 microns. And what that absolute stands for, that means that every gallon that passes through there on the first trip is filtered at 98.7% efficiency at 2 microns. There's also beta ratio out there. You can have a beta ratio of 10, 20, 30. That means you have to pass the oil through that filter many times to get down to that ultimate 2 microns or whatever it's rated at. So absolute filtration means that the first time through, you're filtered down to that 2 microns, that entire gallon. So bypass uh, is an excellent filter. Then we also have the full flow. It's an EAO26. And that filter is 98.7% efficient at, I believe it's 20 microns. Yes, 20 microns. Okay. We'll be installing the uh, Amsoil Max Duty Diesel Oil. It's SAE5W40. And uh, with that, we can do extended drains along with the bypass filtration system. And we'll cut down the wear significantly over the uh, other oils in the market. And we're also going to be taking an oil sample of the oil that's coming out of that engine right now. That gives you a baseline to compare to when you start using the AMSOIL and the bypass filtration to see how the wear is, is being knocked down. So it's a good idea to get a, uh, a baseline of, of what you've got inside that engine right now. Uh, the kit comes also with the hose you're going to need to go from where the full flow filter was, there's an adapter. And this adapter is a two-part adapter. And that will go on in place of the original filter. And uh, that gets tightened up to the filter post. And then again, the clean oil comes up the center. The dirty oil from the oil pump goes out here and goes to the filter head through the filters. And then both filters, the oil returns back through the center post to feed all the bearings and keep the engine alive. And we have fittings. These are reusable type fitting that go onto these uh, hoses. And I'll be doing a demonstration on how those go together here in a little bit. Another thing that I offer is the uh, vehicle specific brackets for this truck. And uh, AMSO has had these kits out for a long time. They've never had a vehicle specific bracket. Now what I do is I find spots on the vehicle that a holes are already there or there's fasteners already there that I can use. Uh, these frames are heat treated metal, uh, similar to what you find on a semi. You don't want to be drilling in them or cutting in them. Um, it can weaken the frame or it can create a stress point. So what I'm doing is using existing fasteners or holes to, uh, to attach it. And what I've made for this truck is a, uh, a bracket uh, to hold basically the, the brackets that hold the filter head bolt to this. And also uh, a lot of the guys are wanting something for protection on the filters so I fabricated a rock guard as well for uh, protecting the filters. And that will bolt on right along with it. Um, there's a spacer that goes with it, an extra bolt, and mount bolts for the, for the filter head. They're a little bit longer. I'll send those along in the kit. There's also a line support bracket. This bolts up to the, be the cab mount that's welded to the frame. And this helps support the lines on the way back to the filter head. And there's also a nut here. And there's an existing bolt that we'll use to, uh, to attach that. We'll show you that here a little later. Uh, the other thing that uh, we have is the oil sample valve. This makes it easy to take samples on the uh, engine oil so you can figure out where you're at uh, and, and take those samples. Basically, it take you five minutes to take a sample. And you do it with the engine running. Uh, I've got a cap on here to keep the, the valve clean so we don't get dust and water and everything else in it. It keeps that sample clean. And uh, with the engine running, then you can go ahead and take your sample. And that goes into the filter head. Now, there's a little bugaboo I have here, and that is Amsoil uses Loctite to put these in, these plugs. Now when you go to put this, uh, this oil sample valve in, you can see the oil coming from the engine, the dirty oil, is right here. That's this passage. This is where you want to put that, uh, that oil sample valve. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I've got a half inch impact here. I'm running quite a bit of air pressure. Um, these do not come out nice. I had to hammer on that a little bit to get it started before we started this video. But they do put some Loctite on it and uh, they're, they're rather hard to get out. So it's something to be aware of. And uh, this, this fitting here will go right in in place of that, and that will be your place for the oil sample valve. 
So that kind of gives you some idea. This kit here I'm putting together, uh, the kit from Amsoil, you buy that directly from Amsoil. This kit here you can buy directly from me, and that's for uh, basically vehicle specific. And that'll get you uh, mounted up with the, with the bracket, with the kit, and everything for the truck. And the other thing that we offer, I'm a dealer for gold plug magnetic drain plugs. And they use a neodymium magnet, which is the strongest magnet known to man. Now, on this particular truck, I pulled the front and rear fill plugs. From the factory on this truck, on the front one, they have no magnet. On the rear one, there is a magnet, and you can see there's some fuzz on it. And from the factory, it's a gray type magnet, which are very limited in strength. Now, this truck has right around 12,000 miles on it, and you can see some of the wear metals that's collected. But once these uh, gray magnets get uh, kind of fuzzed over with that metal, they don't have a lot of strength to keep pulling that oil, or the uh, metal out of that oil. And what ends up happening is that fine metal goes through your bearings over and over again. And it can damage them. It takes a lot of life off of them. So what I've done here, I've got a, a bolt here. This bolt weighs about a pound, four ounces. I'm going to show a difference in uh, the strength of the magnets. Um, I've also got one here that I've uh, changed out of a, uh, a Duramax diesel, just to show you the, the weakness of the magnets they put in from the factory. And these magnets are just pathetically weak. They can't pull, once they get fuzzed over with that steel, they can't pull a whole lot more to them. Just like this one here, this is the rear one out of this truck. There's just not a lot of strength there. I can rock the bolt a little bit, but I can't even begin to pick it up. I got a couple here from semis. This is one from a, a differential on a semi. It's a brand new one. And again, I can just barely get that bolt picked up, just a little bit off the cardboard there. And this is one from a transmission on a semi. And again, there just isn't a lot of strength to them. This is a gold plug, and this is the one for the engine for the 6.7 power stroke. And that neodymium magnet, just a tremendous difference in what it's going to pull out of that oil. A lot of strength there to it. So, huge difference in, in, in what it's going to pull out of that, uh, that oil and make your differential and, and uh, engine last a lot longer. So that's kind of, uh, these are available, I've got those, they're, they're basically they're $20 a piece, so if that's something that you're interested in, you can always let me know if you're after the brackets, uh, you can also include the, the gold plug along with it. So we're going to start putting this together here, and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, we're going to go together with the bracket onto my Don's oil bracket here. First thing is the large L-shaped bracket. And we're going to use two of the short bolts, and those are going to be in the top two holes here. And then they go in the top two holes of the Don's oil bracket. Okay, we're going to put the hose ends on. Um, these hose ends, the outer, outer shell here, screws off the main fitting. And that gets inserted onto the hose. And when you get this new hose, sometimes the ends are tapered a little bit. Um, I use a tool from Snap-on. It's a Blue Point YA-1000A. It makes a nice 90 degree cut on these hoses. You want to make sure you have a nice clean cut to start with. But this cuts it really nice and smooth and a uh, nice square cut on it. So you need to start with a nice square cut and then uh, this piece is reverse threads. So you put it on the hose and you just start turning it on. It'll grab a hold of that hose and you can do it with your fingers or your, your hand and just turn it until, until it hits. If you look inside it's just hit and then I back it off just a little bit. Just enough so that it ain't binding up on those threads at all. Okay. Next thing I do is I take some uh, some of the engine oil like I'm putting in the engine. Just uh, squirt a little bit of it on the inside of that hose to lubricate the taper as it goes in. And I'll put a little bit on the taper as well. Just to make things slide together a little easier. Okay, and when I do this, 
I usually put the hose ends on both ends of the hose and then I'll show you the procedure for marking out the hose so we know how long to go but uh, I'll put both hose ends on and uh, and then from the filter I'll, I'll string it up and uh, make my final cuts to put the other ends on but uh, you got a vise handy it works real well just clamp the, uh, the shell that's on the hose there in the vise Take the crescent wrench, and there it is. People have asked me about this hose before. I've been doing these for about 15 years. I have yet to have one of these leak. Um, if you look at this hose, it's got, uh, let me grab the other end here, it's got nylon braids in it. You can kind of see it on the end of the hose. Now, being an engine application, we don't need the high pressure like you would see in a hydraulic system. Uh, in hydraulics, what they'll use is steel braids, you know, incorporated into that uh, outer lining of the, of the hose. The inside is a synthetic rubber, the same as what you would find on a hydraulic hose. So as far as the temperature ability of this, is basically the same as what you find on a hydraulic hose. Uh, the only difference is we got nylon for reinforcement, so this will handle um, I don't know what it says on the hose, but uh, these will usually handle in the, in the range of, uh, well, 450 PSI is what it says on the outside of the hose right here. 450 PSI. Your engine should never put out anywhere close to that kind of pressure. So as far as pressure goes, this will handle it easily. So uh, use it in confidence. Uh, I have yet to have a leak in 15 years on them, and they work very well. So if you put them together right, everything will work beautiful. So we're going to get the other end put on here, and then we'll start putting the filter filter head up, and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, we're coming under the passenger side of the truck. I'm going to show you where we use to mount the uh, Don's oil bracket. And right under here you can see the, the running board. And right here, there is two bolts. And there's a, a cross member here. It's actually a skid plate. And we're going to use those two bolts. This is a box frame. And what's inside of that box frame, there's a, there's a square hole right here underneath. And there's a speed nut slipped on the frame going into each side. Now that speed nut is what holds the bolt. So it allows you to tighten it. So we're going to take these out. I've got a longer bolt that goes in here for the rock guard and all that. This one here will get reused. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. Now some of the trucks do not come with a skid plate. And that's not an issue because I have the speed nuts and the bolts to go ahead and you can uh, you can go ahead and mount my bracket on there anyway and what you'll have is a square hole and there'll be a round hole here and a round hole here so if you don't have this skid plate that's not a problem we can still mount using those those existing holes that are in the frame and I've got all the bolts and the, and the speed nuts for that so we're gonna go ahead and pop these bolts out and then we'll get back with you okay here's a shot after I've taken the two bolts out of this uh, the skid plate and you can see these speed nuts this is what they look like from the side okay and you can see they got threads inside. But they basically go into this hole and slip over the frame. So like I said, if you don't have the skid plate, I have, I have the uh, speed nuts and we can still make this all work out for you. So just wanted to show you that. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is put up the bracket with the filter head. Okay, we're ready to put this up. Now all these bolts here are still loose and I left them loose so that we can move things and get things leveled up and, and plumb the way you want it before we tighten everything up. So, I use my knee on the, on the uh, cross member, and we put the original bolt back in that back one, and try and line it up. It's a little springy, might have to play with a little bit. There it goes. Okay, and once I got that threaded in there a ways, where it's uh, enough to hold, then we're going to get ready to do the other side. Now, this other one, like I said, I've got a longer bolt that goes in, and there's a spacer that goes between the Don's oil bracket and the, the, uh, the actual rock guard there. I don't know if you can see it right up in there. And we've got a longer bolt that goes in in place of that short one that we originally took out. Now, the other thing you're going to want to do is put on some uh, medium strength Loctite on those bolts because they had some from the factory and uh, it'd be a good idea to put some on. 
and we're going to do that here before I get this all put together. The head of this bowl I believe is a 13 millimeter, so you got some idea. We're going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these bolt threads because they had some from the factory. And this long bolt replaces that short one. We've got that spacer in there. Get that all lined up. And work on getting it started here. There it goes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to put some Loctite in this bolt yet. And then we're going to snug it up. We're going to try and get things all leveled up where we need it. And then we'll do the final tightening of the bolts up here and the bolts for the filter head. And we've got to tighten up that old sample valve there yet too. So we'll get that all kind of where we want it, get it tightened, and then uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, before you torque these two bolts here going to the frame, they take about 40, 45 foot-pounds of torque, and you've got a little bit of Loctite on, so they're not going anywhere when you're done. But uh, this bracket here, there's enough looseness in it, and you want to get everything leveled up and straight. So look at it from the side, you know, through the, through the running board, and get this thing leveled up the way you want it. And uh, so that everything's nice and straight. You know, look at the filter. I throw a filter on. And I'm looking at the edge of this uh, rock guard here as well. So before you torque it, get it where you want it. Okay, there's a wiring harness right here that feeds back to the diesel particulate filter. And that'll go right above the, uh, the bolts here for the, for the mount. You can't really see the, the bolt sticking through back here, but uh, there's enough room. That's why we have this bend out or this flare out on this, this uh, bracket. And that gives us clearance for that, uh, for that wiring harness. So the other thing that I'm going to make mention of is... When we're going to do these hoses, we're going to be doing those here shortly. Keep these, uh, especially the clean side of the filter, the center part right here. This is where the clean oil goes back to your bearings. So for the hose and for everything on this side, the cleaned side, you make sure you keep everything clean all the way up to the engine. You don't want to get any dirt. If your dirt, truck's dirty underneath, I would suggest washing it beforehand. But keep everything clean on that clean side going back to feed the engine. Any dirt gets in that hose or anything, it's going to hit your bearings next. So you got to protect it and take care of it. So just cleanliness, keep it clean. Okay, the other thing is uh, we got this adapter that goes in to that filter head. And it's got an O-ring on it. The O-ring does the sealing. It's not the threads that seal, it's the O-ring. So we're going to take a little bit of, uh, little bit of grease. And we're going to just coat that O-ring. You can use oil if you like, but I, I like the grease because it usually doesn't run off into my face while I'm tightening it. And it does the same thing for you. So we'll put that in, tighten it up. It should be a 7 8 wrench on that. snug and the other item we're going to be putting in is going to be that old sample valve and that that seals on the threads so what I'll use there is a little bit of pipe dope with Teflon and uh, just put a little bit on there and put it on the threads and when you go to tighten this this is brass so you got to be careful with it don't over tighten it I've had guys that uh, have twisted them off before and call me up and say hey I think I over tightened it <laughs> so we'll put that in Turn it as far as you can by hand, and then we'll finish it with a uh, with a crescent wrench, and have that pointing straight down. But again, don't over tighten it. It's brass, and it seals on the taper of the pipe threads. So you don't have to bottom it out. All you have to do is get it nice and snug. Okay. And if you do notice, it, if you're afraid you aren't tight enough, you notice it's seeping a little bit, then you can go ahead and tighten it tighter if you need to. But uh, you get her good and snug, and you should be good with that. So we're going to get started with the hoses next. Okay, this is the filter adapter. This goes on in place of your original full flow filter. This is what's going to direct you all over to the bypass filter head. And uh, these O rings right here, this is what seals to this aluminum housing. That O ring right there. And then there's an O ring on this one, and an O ring on this one. And they seal to the aluminum housing right here on this bevel and right here on this bevel. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of grease on those. Enough to give them a little bit of lubrication so that they don't get cut when you put them together. And uh, 
like I said, I like to grease simply because it doesn't run off like oil does. You can use oil if you'd like, whatever your preference is. Doesn't take a whole lot, just enough to make it nice and slippery. And that straight one's going to go out the side, and the one with the 90 degree bend is going to come from the bottom and shoot sideways towards the frame. And those fittings I'm going to tighten when I get under the truck. This nut right here is an inch and three quarter. Now they're telling me to go about a turn and a quarter on these. And what I tell guys is to use good judgment. First you go finger tight, <clears throat> and on, depending on the thread pitch, it's going to determine how fast it, it tightens up. Now the Fords have a fairly fine thread on there, but on the GMs what I've found is if I go more than about a half turn, or if I get to about three-fourths of a turn after finger tight, I start rupturing this gasket. So you've got to use good judgment when you do it. Get it tight. If it's too loose, it's going to leak. If it's too tight, you're going to uh, rupture this gasket. And it's going to leak eventually. So like I say, use good judgment on it. I typically will go anywhere from about a half a turn to three-quarter turn on these Fords. I just use, like I said, use good judgment. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this, and I'll be back with you. Okay, I put a thin film of oil on this uh, gasket here. And we're going to start that up on the filter post. And we're going to take it up finger tight, and the instructions say a turn and a quarter. And I use this, uh, I put this extra hose fitting on as kind of a handle to keep that where I want it as I'm tightening up that nut. So, and again, this is an inch and three quarter. I've got an inch and three quarter wrench, or if you got a socket, that'll work as well. But, uh, like I say, you take it up finger tight, well, as tight as you can go by hand, and then we'll count the flats. There's about one flat. There's two flats. There's three flats. There's about four. I'm getting there. I'm getting to the point where I think I'm going to stop. Because we're at about, probably about a turn right there, pretty close to it. You don't want to go too far. That's about as far as I want it to go. And if I need to, I want this shooting right back because this is going to come back kind of right through this A-arm. And then this uh, 90, we're going to position that. This is the clean side. And again, keep everything clean with that. Dirty oil comes out the side. Clean oil goes up the center. And we're going to adjust that so that it's pointing in that general direction. Then we can clamp these two hoses together here and go through right here by the frame. So that's how we get that all tight. Um, next thing is to tighten up these fittings, follow the instructions on those, and then we'll be uh, cutting the hoses. So we'll do that and be getting back with you. Okay, we've got a line support bracket and there's a ground for the cab that goes here to this mount on the frame. And this is threaded right here. And I've got a nut that'll be with a kit. And this here is the line support bracket I've got for it. And that nut will screw right on the back side of that bolt. You can tighten it up. And basically, you're going to want to mount that wherever it's best for the routing of the hoses here. The hoses will go right on through those clamps. Then we'll go up here to the filter head. So right now, I've got, we put those two hose ends on. This is all one piece of hose right now. And I've got both of the, the hose ends on the filter head. And we're going to route it and figure out how long our line needs to be. And we've got the fittings on up here on the filter. Okay, and we're going to mark it basically right here at about the end of where my finger is at. Okay, and then uh, we'll cut. We're going to run it through the line support here. So it's up where it needs to be and we'll get everything where we want it before we cut it. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll be back with you. Okay, right up here I've got this line support bracket on. I have it snugged up. I got the hoses run through it. And uh, I've got these hoses pretty well, pretty close to where I want them. Okay, and what we're going to do, there's plenty of hose. You got plenty of hose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these hoses long because it's interfering with the bracket here. I can't get it up to where I can mark it decent. So I'm just gonna come out here and cut it long and, uh, and then take it up on both of them. That way I can kind of lay it beside the fitting. Okay, so this fitting right here, you can see it comes from the side. You got to keep track of your hoses. This here's your, your one from the side, that's your dirty oil coming over. That dirty oil, we've got it set up so it comes on the inside closest to the frame. And that's where you're taking your sample from. You can see the sample valve here on the back side, that's where you put the sample valve. Okay, so make sure you keep track of where they go. And we're going to get things up where we want them. I'm going to mark that. If I get a marker here. I'm going to mark that hose. It's going to come straight out. We're going to mark it about right here. Okay, and then this one here is the clean oil going back. And again, make sure you keep that clean hose clean. We're going to get that up here where we want it. Like I say, there's always dirt under these trucks, so you got to keep that hose clean. And we're going to mark that one right about there. Okay, so now we'll take those hoses back off, go over to the bench vise, and we'll cut those, and then we'll put the hose ends on, and we'll come back and reroute them. When I get done with this one for the clean oil, I'm going to blow through it with a clean compressed air, just to make sure there's nothing in it. It's clean. And also when you go back up, you got to make sure that's clean. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll be back with you. Okay, something that might come in very handy for you is a one inch crow's foot wrench. That's the size of this fitting, because to get a regular wrench in there is pretty tough. I've got a little stubby one inch, and that helps. I mean, I can get in there quite a bit, but it's just too much of an angle. And that crow's foot helps a bunch. If you know somebody that's got one, or if you got one yourself, the crow's foot will let you get right in there and tighten that hose up, that hose end up. Okay, so that's the dirty oil hose there that we got, and then we can put up the, the clean one. And again, that crow's foot wrench comes in pretty handy on that. And what I might end up doing here yet is taking this outside one off because I might want to, or the inside one off because the outside one's a little tight here with that cab. And I might end up just putting that one on first and doing this one last. We'll see what I can do here. With the crow's foot, it might not be bad though. There we go. Okay. But yeah, crow's foot is definitely a huge plus for putting these on. Okay, next thing we'll do is we're going to put this bolt in, tighten it up. We still have to tighten down here on the filter head yet too. We'll do that next. But uh, we'll get this tightened up and we'll be back with you. Okay, I'm going to include a uh, zip tie along with this kit and that'll help. It's a big zip tie, quarter inch. And you can put it on about right here. And what that'll do is help pull that Pull them two together, get all done, you can trim it off, get them nice and snug together. And I've had people ask me about this swing arm as far as if that's an issue. And what I say is if you think about this, there's a bumper up here that stops that swing arm. Okay, it stops the travel of the axle. If you get this swing arm close enough to pinch off these hoses, you're having bigger troubles to worry about than the oil leaking out of them. What I mean by that is you will have had a bad accident or you've gone over a cliff or something because this swing arm should never come in contact with that frame. And we're right up close to that frame there and the cab mount keeps the, the hoses at a nice spot. So we'll trim off this, uh, this tab here, but uh, we've got these hoses routed here. I just wanted to show you that in relation to the swing arm. So, all right. Okay, we've got this pretty well buttoned up. I want to show you the, the completed install. And as you look here beside the uh, 
underneath the passenger side door you can see the two filters and right there is your uh, your running board and as we look at it from the wheel side where the rocks are going to be flying at it you can see right here is our rock guard for those filters good and solid this thing ain't going anywhere so what I ended up doing over here I put another zip tie on so what I'll do is add two zip ties those heavy quarter inch zip ties in with the kit if you buy that kit from me and uh, that's right there by the frame and as we roll back you can see the full flow and bypass filter the bypass at the back and when you go to take your sample you can get your your engine up to temperature take off the cap and then you can go ahead and take your sample right there put the cap back on keeps everything clean tighten it up so it don't come off and uh, take a look up here underneath at where we have our hoses and everything Let's see if I can get a little light on it and that's how the adapter and everything looks there and like I say we got probably about a turn about a turn after finger tight on that gold nut that's about as far as I wanted to go because we're getting really tight at that point and that's all good and solid uh, hose goes up there right underneath the frame so that's pretty much it uh, the clearance let's take a look at the clearance of it right next to the frame and you can see the bottom of it here there's kind of the skid plate and the other skid plate kind of right here so we got good clearance up there it's up and away you know it's at about even with the bottom the filters are even with about the bottom of the frame actually about right in there so but we got that good and solid and and again, you know, you got the tire right up here. You can see how close proximity it is to those filters. That way, if any rocks fly up, that rock guard's going to stop them, protect those filters. So that kind of gives you some idea what all we got. And uh, with that bracket, with the offset, we've got just enough clearance right here from that uh, running board bracket to the filter. We've got probably a good close to half, three eighths of an inch right there. So kind of gives you some idea what all we got. And uh, that's it for this installation. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Don's Oil. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case, differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.